waters are fast moving. Unlike other big rallies, a bit earlier at about 7 a.m., a group from the Post Fund. Welcome to Hashtag PH Vote 2013. Today on Rappler, Malaysia says missing flight 370 crashed into the Indian Ocean. Two informants get a combined reward of 11.2 million pesos or about $250,000 for the arrest of top communist leaders. And the Philippines prepares to file convincing evidence against China over disputed sea territories. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. After more than two weeks of searching, Malaysia says MH Flight 370 crashed into the Indian Ocean. On Monday, Prime Minister Najib Razak says new satellite analysis of the missing plane's path puts its last position in remote waters off Australia's west coast, far from any landing sites. He says, quote, it's therefore with deep sadness and regret that I must inform you that according to this new data, flight MH370 ended in the southern Indian Ocean. Najib says Malaysia Airlines already spoke to the families of the 239 passengers and crew on board the jet, which disappeared March 8 on a flight from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing. But the announcement still leaves the question of why the plane veered from its intended course. Najib says representatives from Britain's Air Accidents Investigation Branch relayed further analysis of satellite data by British company Inmarsat. Malaysia Airlines says the search will continue to, quote, seek answers to the questions that remain. Theories about the plane's disappearance include hijacking, pilot sabotage, or a sudden mid-air crisis that incapacitated the flight crew and left the plane to fly on autopilot until it ran out of fuel. The U.S. Navy sends a specialized device to the search area to help find the plane's black box and cockpit voice data as deep as 20,000 feet. The black box is crucial in determining what happened to the plane. MH370 last made contact over the South China Sea, halfway between Malaysia and Vietnam. It backtracked over the Malaysian Peninsula for unknown reasons and flew on for hours. The search swung deep into the Indian Ocean after initial satellite images showed large floating objects there. How did British satellite company Inmarsat find MH370? The satellite operator says it managed to work out which direction the missing plane flew by measuring the Doppler effect of hourly pings from the aircraft. The Doppler effect is the change in frequency caused by the movement of a satellite in its orbit. Although the plane's communication systems were switched off, satellite pings still bounced back from the aircraft. Inmarsat measured the amount of time it took for the pings to be returned. The results gave them a predicted path both in the north and south routes. They then compared those figures to data from other planes and similar flight routes and concluded the plane went down the southern corridor. Inmarsat's Chris McClellan says it's the first time the technique was done without GPS data. He adds, because aircraft in that region are not mandated to send out signals of their location, we were working from blind. So this is very much a unique approach. For our social media post of the day, the latest update on Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 was heartbreaking, not only for the families of those aboard, but also for the rest of the world. Netizens commented about China's outrage and Malaysia's credibility. Arthur Go Ifurong says, I sympathize with the families of the victims, but protesting will not help. I'm not lawyering for Malaysia, but they did everything they could and with what they had. No one in Malaysia wanted this to happen. Francis Arceta says, according to latest data, that's how the Malaysian PM phrased his statement when he concluded that the missing aircraft is in the Indian Ocean. Not a very assuring statement, considering that they seem to have the hobby of issuing flip-flopping statements on the whereabouts and the reason why the aircraft disappeared. The Philippines prepares what it calls very convincing evidence against China in the two countries' dispute in the South China Sea. Manila is set to file its written pleading or memorial against Beijing on March 30th before an arbitral tribunal backed by the United Nations. Foreign Affairs Secretary Albert Del Rosario says Manila's memorial is a voluminous document with more than 100 pages of evidence. Based on the rules of procedure set by the arbitral tribunal, the memorial should come 
with, quote, all documentary witness, expert, and other evidence that the Philippines intends to rely on. The Philippines will submit the memorial after China reportedly offered incentives to stop this, while observers also warned about a possible backlash from Beijing. But the Philippines lawyer Paul Reichler tells Rappler he is confident about the case. He adds, the entire legal team that has engaged that was engaged by the Philippines believes that the Philippines has a strong case both on jurisdiction and on the merits. The founding chairman of the Communist Party of the Philippines, or CPP, says the arrest of two top cadres won't cripple the party. Founding chairman Jose Maria Sison says comrades are set to replace Benito Chamson and his wife Wilma Austria after they were arrested Saturday in Cebu. Sison says this won't set back the armed struggle, adding, to use basketball parlance, I say the CPP has a deep bench. But the military says that Champson's arrest will result in a vacuum in leadership that will be felt by the organization. Military Intelligence Chief Major General Eduardo Año says it would take the CPP at least six months to convene a plenum and, and elect the replacement of Chamson. The military holds Chamson responsible for the land mining, the killings and the violence of the New People's Army. But in a statement Monday, the CPP dismisses the military's claim saying, quote, with such deep-rooted causes for the armed conflict, the Aquino regime and the AFP are indeed hallucinating if they believe that the Chamson's arrest will cause the armed struggle to dissipate. The CPP claims it has 150,000 dedicated cadres in more than 110 front committees nationwide, but the military estimates bring the number down to about 4,000. CPP demands the release of the Chamson couple, saying their arrest was illegal. Two people who provided crucial information that led to the arrest of the top leaders of the CPP will get a reward of 11.2 million pesos or about $250,000. The military says there's a 5.6 million peso bounty each for Benito Chamzon and wife Wilma Austria, but Major General Eduardo Año says there's a proposal to increase the reward to 10 million pesos for each. The military and police arrested the Chamzon couple Saturday. Military spokesman Lieutenant Colonel Ramon Zagala says it was not easy to locate and identify the two. Before their arrest, the military's latest photo on Chamzon was taken in the 90s. Cadet Aldrin Jeff Kudia is not about to give up his fight. His mother files a petition asking the Supreme Court to set aside the Philippine Military Academy's verdict that found him guilty of violating the honor code. Kudia was dismissed for supposedly lying about the explanation for his tardiness. Mrs. Kudia asks the PMA to, quote, restore Cadet Kudia's rights and entitlements as a full-fledged graduating cadet, including his diploma and awards. She says the trial is a sham, citing the real voting result of 8 to 1. Included in her petition is an affidavit David from Commander Junji Tabuada of the Philippine Navy, who earlier detailed his conversation with the cadet First Class Lagura, the Honor Committee member who voted against Kudya's dismissal but was pressured to change his vote. Mrs. Kudya says Lagura's admission is, quote, vital information which could shed light on the case. On March 19th, the Supreme Court Third Division deferred action on Kudya's initial plea to graduate from the academy. Kudya's family says he was expecting to graduate as salutatorian of his class and at the top of his Navy class. The Honor Committee is a powerful group in the PMA composed of students. The committee probes and rules on reports of alleged violations of the PMA Honor Code, which orders cadets not to lie, cheat, steal, or tolerate those among them who do. The evening before his graduation, Kudya tried but failed to convince President Benigno Aquino and Defense Secretary Voltaire Gazmin to allow him to graduate this year. Kudya's appeal before the president led the armed forces of the Philippines to order a review of the PMA's honor system. In an unprecedented move, Israel's embassy in the Philippines says it's temporarily closing shop because of a global strike among Israeli diplomats. This means the Manila Embassy will stop its visa services, its aid and development programs in the country, and the preparation of important agreements between the Philippines and Israel. In a statement, the embassy says the decision was made by the Foreign Ministry's Employees Labor Union. The diplomat strike began March 4 after Israel's finance ministry failed to reach a compromise with the union's demands. 
Let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 8, an Egyptian court sentences 529 supporters of ousted President Mohamed Morsi to death after a mass trial. Islamist backers of Morsi face a deadly crackdown launched by the military-installed authorities since his ouster in July. They were accused of attacking people, public property, and causing the deaths of two policemen after security forces broke up two Cairo protest camps. A second group of about 700 defendants will be on the dock Tuesday. At number 9. A traveler returning to Canada from West Africa is in hospital after displaying symptoms of the Ebola virus that killed dozens in Guinea. A health official says the patient went to Liberia and developed the symptoms after landing in Canada. Aid workers and health officials in Guinea are fighting to contain West Africa's first outbreak of the deadly Ebola virus. At least 59 people died in Guinea's southern forests. And at number 10. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un may strike fear into some hearts, but photos of a Chinese street food vendor who looks like him amuse netizens. Chubby, with a round face and sporting Kim's trademark side-shaved haircut, the unnamed vendor was pictured cooking skewered meat on a rusty barbecue. Beijing has long been Pyongyang's closest ally, but Chinese social media users often hit the young leader with irreverent criticism. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page. That crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that have gotten the most number of votes on their mood meter. These stories have affected Rappler's readers and viewers the most. Take a look at these 10. Today is a very gray day. Um, you saw the last rap. You have Kim Jong-un lookalike in China, a hit. 26% happy, 36% amused. But the story that dominates the mood navigator is about the Malaysian Airlines plane. The missing plane ended at the Southern Ocean. U.S. sending black box locator and robotic underwater. And the story, here we go. How was MH370 found? Interesting here, you see 8% angry and 59% sad. The story that's gotten the most number of votes. MH370 ended at the Southern Indian Ocean. A whopping 90% sad. The gray bringing out the mood of the day. Today, most people are sad. That is Rappler Snoozecast for today, Tuesday, March 25, 2014. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.